This is fired clay, terracotta. He is one of the UK's leading experts on Greek and Mediterranean artefacts. But last month, Peter Higgs was sacked by the British Museum after almost 30 years. He has not been arrested or charged with any offence. His family say he's done nothing wrong. But his departure from the museum came shortly before they announced items from its collection were missing, stolen or damaged, and that an unnamed member of staff had been dismissed. In a national museum, this is a, a disgrace. Information is only just emerging, but academics say concerns had been raised more than two years ago. It sounds to me as though there was something of a cover-up going on in the museum because of the very severe reputational damage that this might do. And of course, what's actually happened means that the reputational damage is far, far worse. I think the, 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 the story of objects... There is no clear evidence of a cover-up, but the museum's director, Hartwig Fisher, is now under intense pressure. He had already announced he's standing down next year. I think this is a matter of where they should just step down now and, and, and temporary uh, director and, uh, and director should be put in place. So you think the director of the museum should now resign? Yes. Yeah. The British Museum won't say how many items have been lost or stolen or indeed their total value, perhaps because they don't really know. The report suggests more than 1,500 artefacts are now missing. The result, not just historical damage, but reputational damage too. Protecting the collection is particularly challenging because of its vast scale. The British Museum has around 8 million artefacts and the estimate is that maybe, you know, 1% of those are on public display and they'll have alarms and cabinets and all the things we'd associate with the museum security. However, when they're sort of behind the scenes and they're in storage, that's where I think the vulnerability has really been able to um, set in here. What could the potential motivations be for the person committing this sort of crime? Of course, financial gain is going to register highly, but we also know that some individuals, it's, it's simply opportunity. They realise how easy it is to steal something, usually starting off very small, and then if they're not apprehended, it can escalate really quickly. There's a really interesting aspect to this psychologically, and that is the justifications. So it may be that an individual said, you know, I'm stealing these because They've been in deep storage. Nobody else is appreciating their beauty, their value. And so I'm going to have them and appreciate them in a way that perhaps other people don't. Another justification, possibly for somebody who might be ideologically motivated, is that they might say, well, these items of antiquity have been stolen anyway. Because the missing items are thought to be small, gems, jewellery and engravings, many may be impossible to recover. If you steal the Rosetta Stone or you steal a Van Gogh, it's very hard to sell. Everybody knows these pieces. So the best thing to do if you, are, if you have a criminal mind is to steal small objects, gold, silver, jewelry, because you can melt down. Pieces of jewelry you can dismantle, take off the diamonds. These things then disappear on the market, um, on the black market, and sometimes even on the legal market. We may never know the true scale of the damage to this priceless collection, but tonight the world's largest museum is in crisis.